destroy others. Why do you need to come to my platform and insult me? They do not look holy. There was a certain prophetess telling me, I have no right to even touch the Bible or use the Bible because I'm divorced. Hi, my YouTube family. Welcome on set today. The topic of today is let them. And I will start with the book of Philippians, verse 1. Uh, Philippians 1, 15 to 18. And I'll read King James. And before we end back into the scriptures, somebody will wonder why we are saying let them. Who are we letting them? After the, the book of Philippians, once I read, then we'll begin to understand why the topic of today is let them. Allow them, let them be. I mean. And by the end of the day, let us all learn to know that by the end of the day, anyone who's called into the ministry, anyone who is um, illegally in the ministry, meaning you have not been called by God to serve him, anyone who actually has ill motive into doing, laboring in the works of God, either to deceive people or even out of jealousy, envy, conversiousness of others, so you want to steal the show or whatever the case it is. Remember by the end of the day, the wheat and the tear, once they grow together, once they are mature, you'll definitely tell the difference. So that is how I felt that we needed to have this short and brief um, teaching to remind us and sometimes also I have come to realize um, there are many scriptures in the Bible that many people don't know about. So many are times that people will get angry because of something that has happened and um, they result to physical um, solutions not knowing that in the scriptures God has already guided us on the way out or on how to resolve those particular matters, right? Now, uh, let's get into the truth, the word of God, Philippians 1, 15 and 18, and I'll read King James. Sir. Some indeed preach Christ, even of envy and strife, and some also of goodwill. Verse 16, the one preach Christ of contention, not sincerely, supposing to add affliction to my bones but to others of love, knowing that I am set for the defense of the gospel. 18. What then? This is very profound. I want you to listen. What then? Because here we are starting with the scripture and we are being told that there are people who preach Christ even of envy and strife. They are preaching out of envy. They saw somebody preaching and maybe they feel that this person has a following and you think, you can just wake up and go do similar. You can copy or not even copy to go and try to outshine this particular person. So 15 is saying some indeed preach Christ even of envy and strife and some also of goodwill. They are them that who have even are gifted to preach or to teach, you know, to do the things of you do it selflessly. It is a gift that God has given you. You're doing it out of goodwill. Verse 16 is saying, the one preach Christ of contention, not sincerity. You're not even preaching him in sincerity. Supposing to add affliction to my bones. Some also, you've heard even in some churches whereby um, somebody will go to the pulpit with very ill and evil intentions. You're just going to preach to to spite somebody else. We have a word we normally say to slay somebody. You're just going, maybe this person something happened and you're just going on the pulpit to just intimidate, to just insult somebody. Maybe there's um, a sister in the church. Mistakes do happen. And this lady, maybe she's even pregnant and maybe she was a choir member or something happened. So you're standing on the pulpit to, to just preach and start taking that opportunity in an altar to spite that person or to, in lack of a better word, to just start gossiping to the congregants of what is happening to that person. You see, so you are doing it out of ill motives. 
You're not going to the pulpit to encourage, to heal wounds. Remember this particular person suffering? Even if it was a sin, this person is guilty enough. This person wants somebody to tell her it's okay. Even if you have sinned, even Jesus Christ, what sin was not forgiven? You know. Now we go to verse 18. What then? Notwithstanding, every way, whether in pretense or in truth, Christ is preached. And I therein do rejoice ye, and we rejoice. So what are we being told in this scripture? That, remember the topic of today is let them. When such people take the podium, take the pulpit to preach out of envy, to preach out of strife, to preach to slice others, to preach, you know, slicing means you are standing in that podium to cause affliction as verse 16 is saying, supposing to add affliction to my bones. So you are not actually preaching to encourage, to heal wounds, to strengthen somebody, but you just want to add affliction on what that person is undergoing. So what is the scripture telling you as a solution? Verse 18 is saying, what then? Notwithstanding every way, whether in pretense or in truth, Christ is preached. By the end of the day, they are going in a way to preach Christ. Even if they will use two minutes to insult, they will use one minute. But by the end of the day, there will be a message of Christ. There will be a message of Christ being taught. So by the end of the day, leave them. Let them be. Because by the end of the day, Christ has been preached. What then? Notwithstanding, every way, whether in pretense or in truth, Christ is preached. And I therein do rejoice. Ye and I will rejoice. So the scripture is telling us this kind of people, you don't need to fight them. You don't need to go and even demonstrate against them. You don't need to go and even like um, uh, lobby for them to be, to be removed from their position. Let them be. Because by the end of the day, Christ has been preached. Christ Christ is preached. So the scripture is saying by the end of the day, even if they had their ill motives to stand on that podium, but by the end of the day, there was a message. There was a message and there was a preaching. The preaching was preached and it was preached about Christ. So by the end of the day, Christ has been preached. So I will take you to another book of Mark, the book of Mark uh, 9, 38 to 40. And now read King James. And John answered him, saying, Master, we saw one casting out devils in thy name, and he followeth us not. And we forbade him, because he followeth not us. You see, um, the disciples had even to take the law on their hands, because the person they are accusing, they are saying this person is not even a follower of us, is not a follower of you, Christ Jesus. And we found him casting out devils in your name. So we stopped him. We forbade him to discontinue. Do not continue casting out demons in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Now listen to what Jesus said in 38. But Jesus said, Forbid him not. For there is no man which shall do a miracle in my name. For there is no man which shall do a miracle in my name that can lightly speak evil of me. You see, so you cannot do a miracle in the name of Jesus Christ and speak evil of Jesus Christ. So even if he's not a follower of Christ Jesus, even if he has not been seen to follow the doctrine of Christ Jesus. And this person is casting out devils in the name of Jesus Christ. Forbid him not. Don't stop him like the disciples did. Don't stop him. Because there is no one who can use my name 
and speak evil of me. That is what Jesus was saying. For he that is not against us is on our part. You cannot go starting using the name of Jesus, casting out devils in the name of Jesus, using the name of Jesus. And just because you, you have not been seen following Christ, we forbid you or we start condemning you. We start saying, why are you using the name of Jesus forcefully? Yet miracles are happening. If you're using the name of Jesus Christ to do all these things, you are one of us. So we should not forbid you. So we should not accuse you. We should not stop you. You see, because even back in the days, as it is happening even now, because one is using the name of Jesus and you're asking them, so which denomination are you coming from? So who is your pastor? Who ordained you? Eh? So who do you follow? I follow Jesus Christ. Everything I'm doing, I'm doing it in the name of Jesus Christ. So no one has a right to stop that person. That is what the scripture is telling us. So the lesson of today has diverse meanings. And I want us to concentrate keenly so that we don't wind up making an error by stopping people who are using the name of Jesus and miracles, testimony, signs, and wonders are following. But now we are condemning them. We are devaluing them. We are actually even going ahead to accuse them. They are not followers of Jesus Christ just because they are not a congregant of your church. They are not members of your church. They are not known even for which church they belong to. Okay? So Jesus said, Verse 40, for he that is not against us is on our part. The one who is using, and then 39, he said, just because they are using my name, they cannot work against me. They cannot speak evil of me. They cannot speak evil of the name they are using to cast out demons and actually demons are living. You cannot use the name of Jesus to do a miracle and a miracle is seen and then you speak ill or evil against the same name or the same person of Jesus Christ. Okay? So here the disciples, they did not do right when they went to stop that person who was casting out demons in the name of Jesus Christ just because this person was not a follower of Jesus Christ. So Jesus Christ told them, forbid him not. Don't stop him from doing it. Let him continue casting out devils in the name of Jesus Christ. Okay? Because he cannot speak evil against my name, yet he is using the same name to cast out devils. Right? So I hope you have learned something today. Yeah? Number one, it doesn't matter whether you're using, you're using the pulpit to preach out of ill motive. You're using the pulpit out of envy out of strife you're trying to contend and compete with somebody else that's why you're going to the pulpit to preach that's why you are copying somebody to go and outshine or out to do somebody else you are not supposed to be stopped because by the end of the day christ is preached by the end of the day christ is glorified you know then i will take you now to matthew 13 24 to 43 and now read King James. And this is very profound because now you'll understand why Jesus was telling us, let them be, leave them, let them be. It doesn't matter. You know, by the end of the day, we are all naked before God. We are all naked before Christ. There is no hypocrisy in Christ. So whatever motive you have to do what you are doing on the pulpit, by the end of the day, you are naked before the creator you claim to serve. So I will take you to Matthew 13, 24 to 43, and I'll read King James. Another parable put, put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seeds in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. But when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruits, then appeared the tears also. 27. So the servant of the householder came and said unto him, Sir, did not thou sow good seeds in thy field? From whence 
then has it tears. 28. He said unto them, An enemy has done this. The servant said unto him, Will thou then that we go and gather them up? 29. But he said, Nay, lest while you gather up the tears, you root up also the wheat with them. So what, what was what the master was trying to tell the servants? If you have noted that the tears now are growing together with the wheat, if you go and remove them, you might remove even the wheat together. Remember, they are growing up together. Some of them, they almost look alike. So the master is telling them, don't. Because if you dare go start removing the tears now, you might accidentally also remove the wheat together with the tears. So what is that telling us? Let both grow together. This is what the master is telling us. Let them grow together until the harvest. And in the time of harvest, I will say to the reapers, gather ye together first the tears and bind them in bundles to burn them. But gather the wheat into my barn. So what are we being told? Here we are talking about the church. And in the church, there is the wheat and the tears. We might not be able to really identify the tears, the evil that has been planted in the church. Remember the seed of God and the seed of the devil. In the church, there is a mixed multitude. Also, the Bible teaches us about the mixed multitude. So there is a mixed multitude in this church. But now, as they are growing in faith, you might wake up to go. You have identified their tears amongst the wheat. So as the church is growing, you wake up and say, I need to weed out the tears. In the process, you will accidentally weed out the wheat together with the tears. So the master, who is the master? Our God is teaching us today, let them grow together. Let the wheat and the tears grow together. Let the children of God and the devil stay in the church together. Everyone has his own mission, especially the children of the devil. Let them grow together. But remember, when harvest comes, there is no hiding. When this come, when they become of age, you can easily tell what the wheat is and what the tear is. There is no hiding anymore once they have all grown up. So what is that telling us? They are going to gather the tears first together to be burned and the wheat for the burn. So by the end of the day, there will be no more hiding. We will get to know who are the tears. We will get to know who the wheat is. And the tears will be gathered together for the fire and the wheat will be gathered together for the barn. So let us not be so much in a hurry to condemn people because in the process, you're busy saying this is of the devil, this is of God, just because maybe of the dress code and you have already judged a wheat confused a wit to be a tear. So don't be so much in a hurry to condemn people. Don't be so much in a hurry to judge other people, rooting them, removing them from the church because they do not fit in your dress code. They do not look holy as expected. They do not um, present themselves as holy. Leave them for the harvest. Leave them till maturity. Because by the end of the day, you shall know them by their fruits. Fruits comes once maturity has already commenced. You're already mature. When a tree, when a plant has fully grown, it bears fruits. And that is why the scripture says we shall know them by their fruits. So let them grow together. Because when harvest comes, when they are all mature, when they, have, when they have given birth to the fruits, then you shall know this is the tear and this is the wheat. Right? Out of the abundance of their heart, their mouth will speak. In maturity, you cannot hide anymore. How you speak, how you carry yourself, how you behave, 
then we shall know you by your fruits. Out of the abundance of your mouth, what are you speaking? Are you bringing? Because I can only give you what is welling up deep within me. Whose seed I am? If I am the seed of the devil, I will struggle so hard to bring life to you. But if I am the seed of God, I don't struggle to bring healing to anybody. I don't struggle to bring strength to anybody. I do not struggle to encourage anybody. I do not struggle to do good to humanity. Because I can only be that seed which I am. You understand? Remember where the scripture Jesus was saying, you are just like your father the devil. He was a liar from the beginning. You will struggle so hard to tell truth. Because you are not born of the truth. So your work from day in, day out, your work is to lie. Everything you do is lie. Everything you do, you lie to even accuse people forcefully. Your work is to lie just like the seed that has given birth to you. So we will not struggle to root you out when you are still young. We will watch you grow. Because by the end of the day, we will know you by your fruits. By the end of the day, when you open up your mouth, we already know what you are. Venomous viper. That is what Christ was calling. You know? You are just like your father, the devil, who was a liar from the beginning. You just work to fulfill the mandate of your father, the devil. So you do not need to really struggle to root out an evil person. Because in the process when they are growing up together, you will make a mistake to even uproot a child of God. Because remember when they are young, the wheat and the tear almost look the same. But you are told by our Abba Father, let them grow together. Because in harvest time, they cannot hide anymore. So the harvester, it is so easy for the harvester. When they come, they can tell this is the tear, we gather them to burn. And this is the wheat, we gather them for the barn. Right? So today we had three teachings. And these three teachings are telling us what? Let them. So now you understand the title of our topic today. Let them. Let them be. Don't struggle. Don't engage into fight. You have seen in the recent times, in the days, in the times that we are living in, there are so many fights in churches. And you see to wonder, why are people fighting? Why are we contending with each other? Why are we competing? Why are we so envious of each other? Now, because I'm seated here and I'm not competing with any pastor, I'm not competing with any prophet, I'm not even in your church. You understand? And you are so hell-bent. Let me use hell because you are just like your father, the devil. You are so hell-bent to lie, to cause so much trouble, to fight so hard to see my downfall. You're fighting so hard to make sure that I cease to even speak or be seen. By the end of the day, we will know you. We will know you or we already know you by your fruits. Out of the abundance of your hearts, your mouth definitely will speak. And when it speaks, we know who you already are. You cannot hide for long. You can only manage to hide when you're growing up. But within no short time, even as you begin to bring out fruit, we already know who you really are. Right? And the title of today is telling us what? Relax. Let them. Relax. Let them. Yeah? Let them get on that pulpit. Let them go preach. Let them contend with you. You can see even the scripture in Philippians from 15 is telling them, some indeed preach Christ even of envy. You have not even been called to preach or to teach or to prophesy, you know. And you're just doing out of envy, out of 
strife. I like using the exact words God is using because they are very straight to the point. Even in our today generation, you will realize the much of strife in churches, the much of battles, wars in the churches, a born of what? Envy, a born of what? Strife. Because I want to outdo you. I want to outshine you. So what? Then what? So we are being told what? Let them. Because by the end of the day, Christ is preached. Then what happens? By the end of the day, you are growing together. I will know you by your fruits. And soon or later, harvest time is coming. And very soon. So some will be harvested for the fire. And some will be harvested for the burn. And before our creator, we are all naked before him. You can deceive shortly, but soon or later, you'll be found out. Soon or later, you'll be caught. So there is no need to struggle like the disciples did in the book of Mark. We found him preaching. Casting out devils in your name. You see, they were also angry because you're not of us. Why should you be preaching Christ? And yet you're not a Christian. Who called you? Who sent you? Who anointed you? You have had people saying, who is your father? Earthly, they're not even talking of God. Who is your father? You have to have been ordained by a particular minister for me to hold and speak of this Bible. I have to have been a follower of a particular earthly minister. Otherwise, I'm not recognized. I'm not known. I have no right to speak about any scriptures. Remember when we started this platform? Remember I had even mentioned to you that there was a certain prophetess telling me I have no right to even touch the Bible or use the Bible because I'm divorced. Let them. Because by the end of the day, Christ is taught. So, as I was let, you know, they didn't let me, but I continued. Because for me, everything I utter, I can only speak that which I know. I can only tell you what I have proven. And much of what I have proven in my journey and walk of life is based on the scripture. I have proved the scripture. So if I sit on this platform that God graced me freely, what else should I tell you? Out of the abundance of my heart, I can only tell you what is within me. I have proven the scripture. I applied the scripture and they worked for me. You see, I only know the only truth which I have even proven is nothing short but the scriptures. So when I sit here and I preach, when I'm given a topic which is not of me, because I will not tell you, Last year, I knew about the topic of today, let them. But one time I'm seated and these scriptures come welling up in my spirit and I feel and I'm being told this is a very good topic. And the topic is let them, let them. Why is there? And God starts showing me examples, showing me so much strife that is happening in the church. Why are we fighting? And the scriptures have already given us answers and solutions. Let them. Let them. Why are we competing? Why should we be so envious about each other? Why should we strive? And when this happens, because it happened in the Bible times, that's why we are reading it in the Bible, and it's continuing to happen even in the present days. But what is the solution? Let them. Let them. And the scriptures, the three scriptures we have taught so far is telling you why you should let them. The first one was Christ will be preached. By the end of the day, they will preach Christ. The other one, they will not speak evil of God. So even if you cut somebody and is not of your denomination, yeah, who sent you, who anointed you, who ordained you, you belong to which pastor and denomination, so you have no right as the disciples did, Christ told them, let them continue using my name. Let them continue performing miracles in my name. Because of what? They cannot speak ill or evil of the 
of the name they are using. Then the third one, they were told what? Let them grow together. Let them. They came to the church, yes. And they are evil, yes. And we have noted their tears among us, yes. Let them grow together. Because if we start uprooting them now, we might confuse them with the real seed of God. So let them grow together. Harvest time, we shall know them by their fruits. Harvest time, they are openly. They are open. It is open now. They cannot hide anymore. Their fruits can tell us this is tears, this is wheat. So the wheat is gathered to the pan and the tears for the fire. So let them. So let us not continue strife, strife with each other. For those who are envious, there is no need for envy. Because if truly you believe that God has given you a particular, for me I normally say God has given me a particular gift to teach. There are others who are saying they have been called, they have been anointed, and I also believe I have an anointing. Otherwise I wouldn't be seated here today. I've been called, set apart for a particular mission. Let me be. And I will let you be. I have no business whatsoever just because you are raising the dead, healing the sick, cleansing the lepers. You are decreeing a word and is being established. And now I feel I need to start copying you, copying from your platform what you are doing to outshine you. That is wrong. So for those who do that, you need to stop. And for those that... This is being done to them. Don't be like the disciples of Jesus. Don't fight. Don't stop them. Don't pull them out from the pulpit. By the end of the day, Christ is preached. By the end of the day, harvest time, we shall know them. They shall be gathered for the fire. So there is no need of fighting. There is no need of strife. There is no need of taking the law into your hands. That is what the scriptures are teaching us today. And in, the, in closing, let me take you to the book of Matthew 7, 22. And I'll read 23, 22 and 23. And this is clearly telling us they are already judged. And that is why I think God um, is so easy. He's telling you rest easy. Leave them. Let them be. You know? So Matthew chapter 7, 22 and 23 is saying, Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils. And in thy name done many wonderful works. And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me. Ye that work iniquity. You see? So these people have already been judged. And as I said, we are all naked before God. So it doesn't matter what you have done in the name of God. Deceiving other people. Oh, I'm doing this in, for God. I'm doing this for God. God knows your heart. God knows whether you are doing it out of love. When I sit here today, I have a drive within me as to why I am doing this thing. Maybe it is as a result of what I've gone through. So I'm doing it passionately. I'm doing it out of love to strengthen somebody, to encourage somebody, to save somebody, to rescue somebody, to make a person recognize, oh, in this place I am in, I'm in the wrong place, I made the wrong mistake, I can wake up and leave. There is salvation out there. You understand? So, whatever you are doing, if you are doing it out of the good works, you will be awarded by the end of the day. If you are doing it out of evil motive, ill motives, to hurt others, to cause pain to others, as Paul said, they are doing it to hurt him. They are doing him to cause pain to others. You stand on that pulpit to just destroy somebody, to end somebody. Whatever pulpit God has given, sometimes some of us, majority of us have been given social media platforms. And we are using these platforms to just bring down others, destroy others. Remember, you're already judged. Because you shall stand on that judgment day. Oh, I preached in your name. 
I cast devils in your name. I saved souls in your name. Whose name? Jesus will tell you, worker of iniquity, depart away from me. I knew you not. So who have you been fooling all along? And why are we fighting them? Let them be. Because already their judgment has already been passed. Right? So this topic of today was to just create peace where there are chaos. There is no need for us to rise up, up in arms, to fight each other. And especially in churches. Especially in a place where that place has been consecrated for God. And now it has become a battlefield. There is no need. And the scriptures are already here. For those who did not know some of these scriptures exist, you are being given a solution. Let them be. Let them. Let them be. Let them be. By the end of the day, Christ is preached. By the end of the day, the tears and the wheat will be sought out. By the end of the day, they are using the name of Jesus Christ. So they cannot speak against the same name they are using to work miracles. You see? At the final count, judgment will be at hand. I did, I did, I did, I did, I did. Jesus will tell you, I knew you not. Depart from me, worker of iniquity. Why? God searched the hearts. You might claim you are doing good deeds. But what was the motive behind the so-called good deeds? Envy, strife. Depart away from me, you worker of iniquity. Because everything you are doing in pretense, it was good. It was out of envy and strife. Right? Yes. So this is one of the topics of um, restoring peace. Restoration of peace. I know I've done many videos to give hope, to strengthen, encourage, you know, to motivate. But this one is restoring peace. Let there be peace where there are chaos. Let there be peace where there is war. Because the judgment has already been passed. Because you cannot deceive God. Because we are all naked before God. So what is your problem? Why do you need to come to my platform and insult me? Why do I need to go to somebody's platform or altar or church and start insulting them? Why me, a minister of a particular church, why why should I start talking ill and evil against another minister of another denomination? Does it mean I'm the only one who was called by God, others were not called? And remember, when you are thinking and doing all these things, it's also founded in pride. And remember what the scripture says, God elbows the proud and exalts the humble. So every time you see this kind of seeds, this kind of behaviors between people, between ministers of God, people who have even been called by God, fighting each other, mocking each other, uh, tearing each other down, not only ministers, people who God have given chances to have social media platforms. And instead of following through the gift that God has given you, the mandate that you have been given, I take every second, not for granted. Remember, every second, Live as your last. Instead of me realizing that, I'm using this platform now to bring down somebody else. Just because maybe they have a million views, a million followers, winning gifts and receiving money from YouTube channel. Then I wake up now because I'm not there yet. My work is to bring down the other. Let's, let there be peace. Let there be peace. And we cannot say that the word of God, the only truth, has not given us the guidelines, has not given us the solution, has not given us the directives as to how we should do, what we should do when we face these things. The word of God has answers, as I always say, to everything. So let there be peace. Let there be peace. Let us keep away from envy, jealousy, covetousness, hatred. And let us run away from lies. Lying about others to just tear people down, destroy people. Let us stay away from that. Let there be peace. I repeat again, let there be peace. Let there be peace. 
And because this is a peace topic, I almost said like, it is none of your business. When you're going on others, trying to bring down others, by the end of the day, what do you gain? What do you achieve? What value has it added in your life? Some succeed to even destroying others. What did you gain? What did you achieve? You know? Yeah. Let there be peace. And I pray that, and it is my trust and belief that we have all learned something. For those who need to change, the word of God has aided you to change. For those who need to be encouraged because they are faced similar and they did not even know um, there are some scriptures or God had answers for them. Now you have answers, you know what to do. And mostly God has told them, has told you, let them be. Let them. Let them. Let them. Their judgment has already been passed. Let them. Right? So keep on supporting us by watching. And thank you so much for even choosing this platform to watch, to learn, to be encouraged, to grow, to change your ways, you know. Thank you so much. So keep supporting, keep sharing. When it blesses you, bless somebody else. Continue liking. Kindly like my videos. Kindly share my videos. Kindly give comments. Comment or even ask positive questions. Kindly. And for the new family members, I'm so happy that you have chosen to join us. So even as you watch our video, as you like, as you share, kindly subscribe. Yeah. That is the only way you can support us to continue being on the platform. Subscribe, watch, 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 like our videos, share, and comment. And until next set, God's blessings.